Welcome to TradeTheMBI.com. This is John Supports for the 31st of August. Uh, I almost said October. I was thinking Halloween all the way down the road here. Uh, we're uh, right on schedule. I mean, over 35 on the S&P. Uh, this was something that we knew back in the mid, you know, 2500 range when uh, we could see the Fed's activity and that devaluation of uh, the dollar given the uh, stimulus that was being projected and it just became a matter of as there's any softness in there um, it's met with support and everyone has to bid above it and as they continue to change the threshold uh, we just keep moving up uh, accordingly now that doesn't mean that uh, right now we're looking at a power mode two where we've had this continued power azure over the 13 and as long as that remains like that way you get these beautiful trend runs uh, when it caves below we saw that we had some softness but then it turned around very quickly uh, to push us right back towards the highs now we have our positive extreme marked so we know exactly when the uh, Fed lightens up that uh, we'll get a retrace that will take us back to those ranges and um, that will be considered uh, effectively easing the overbought statuses uh, that people like to describe. We also know that as we get to this plus uh, 13 on the D-Omega and that, uh, especially from a daily, not sustainable uh, for extended periods, same thing with the shakeout uh, when we're over that 25, but uh, we've reached a point where uh, we begin to look for those uh, areas where we're going to get some softness. doesn't necessarily make it catastrophic or the end of the world. It just means that uh, there will have to be some uh, moderate easing. And you can see with the minimal shorts, it makes it tougher to keep driving. That's where they use after hours to press price. And then it uh, fades back down and you get some uh, still pretty great ranges intraday, over 30 points uh, for moves. NASDAQ, likewise, the same situation. Uh, it's been uh, almost uh, identical. I mean, fine, uh, you can compare the relative strength areas to them, but they're really pretty consistent from a reading standpoint, uh, almost identical in their structure. So that's what you look for from a consistency standpoint. So it's been evenly applied throughout. Um, as well with the euro, we've had this uh, steel reset the whole way through, meaning the uh, Fed maintaining it just outside that range that we had for several years uh, has kept it to the upside from the uh, devaluation. And that was simply because the amount of stimulus that the U.S. is applying is uh, significantly greater than the EU. However, the EU is not responding well and may have to uh, accelerate some of theirs. That would push things right back into the range, which would still be comfortable. This definitely helps. Uh, U.S. stocks uh, from an earnings standpoint, and that incredible macro control. I mean, keeping oil uh, flatlined at this particular level, just barely at the break-even in some cases, uh, loss for others. But uh, certainly, from a geopolitical standpoint, though, it certainly has a significant impact because it limits um, power of some of those countries that uh, rely so heavily on oil revenue. Uh, to create havoc and stuff, and so they've been kind of muted because of this. And this again gets back to that limitation of uh, travel in the U.S. As long as people are not commuting to work, not using their vehicles and things like that, you don't have this mass uh, consumption thing other than just for basic transport of goods. So until life returns to normal in the U.S., you're not going to see this go anywhere, but they're certainly uh, doing what they need to to support it uh, at this range. So that active uh, control, if you want to call it, which I don't think you can deny, uh, it's pretty clean, pretty effective. And again, as long as there's no world event situation, uh, gold's going to track somewhere in this elevated area, simply because as soon as you do see um, that pullback, yeah, there's going to be a transmission back into gold uh, as a safe haven, because some people will think that, you know, once the selling starts, that it's going to keep going. However, uh, it's unlikely the Fed will let that happen. We know. Uh, to look for when we, you know, dip past the positive extreme, then we know that uh, something different is taking place. So, closed out all the way at the peaks. Uh, but from an intraday standpoint, we had uh, the push to the highs, a retrace off of them, get all the way up to the 3510, dropped, uh, well, down to the 3480 range. So, I mean, from there, that's 30 point range. Uh, from a day standpoint, we got some nice. Uh, uh, Moves. It was a little bit uh, more conspicuous in this one where we didn't have a steel reset uh, for quite a bit of time and it took a little bit of uh, back and forth before we started to get a stronger move of the power mode too. Uh, even if you had waited until the uh, final push, which was like right up about here, 
uh, where you have the secondary green cross and you'd already moved to shake out positive. Um, any of those leads to the nice uh, setups that usually give you that uh, bonus push. Uh, when we got the DOC spread, it happened with a very early reset of the steel and a turnaround, and then it was just the orange dip that came across, and you actually had an early cross right over there if you wanted a further secondary one to place right here, and that led to the breakouts of the new highs. And so it's all very clean, and that one was right um, around the 3493, so taking all the way to the end of day, the 35 clean, within range, power of the Fed is undeniable, and again, they can utilize those after-hours markets um, to push things a little bit further, and then they let some of it fill back in, and then it's just a matter of uh, picking their points where they're going to stabilize from, and this is where the power of those algorithms really are effective uh, in gauging um, supply demand, and there's really no impetus for people to just want to run. Yes, there are warning signs, but those have existed before. Uh, some believe that if things get bad enough, that you will definitely force both sides to come together and, and get new stimulus from the, the Congress. As we've moved into September, though, uh, the likelihood of a deal of any kind becomes less and less as the solidification of using it for political purposes towards the election. This is where the election is going to have a significant impact on um, how trade goes and, and the perception of people as to the direction will certainly uh, impact where people want to move towards things. And um, that's where the, the, the power of moving money usually dictates uh, where they think sentiment is going. And it's always worthwhile to keep an eye on that. As always, though, uh, most of the changes and alterations are taking place behind the scenes on our algos and color changes. You'll be seeing some um, variations even to uh, what you're seeing here uh, probably for uh, the beginning of September on the paint bars simply because I'm incorporating many more of those power to, um, power to momentum uh, indicator into some of those buy signals and uh, along with the uh, variants off the long short algos so that uh, we just capture the bottoms a little cleaner so that we're not facing some of the drawdowns because some of the earlier buys are correct but um, knowing where we're at with them gives us a little bit better ability to refine you can see that the area of uh, the term is relatively the same as the original signal that happens a lot but in this case it uh, you know, suffered a little bit of a dip before it ended up making that return move. And we just try to move that down a little bit to where we're getting it on the, the turnaround side so that we don't face any of the drawdown at all. Um, and that becomes the most effective way to approach it. So that's where we'd like to keep our focus. And as always, I will update you with anything new or relevant as it uh, pops up. Trade well, and we'll talk again later. Uh, indicators for September will be going out. And uh, you'll be all set to start the new month as we everyone returns back to, we'll see if it's relatively normal life school and uh, everything else. So that's going to be an interesting challenge to see what it looks like uh, until we get uh, some clarity as to a normal return of activity. Uh, we can expect the, the Fed to keep maintaining uh, the status quo and uh, the market will definitely have to react to the devaluation aspect of it. And that, uh, despite what earnings and things are, is going to drive things to a higher multiple. As always, trade well, and we'll talk again later.